Kia ora How are you all doing? Have a kia ora back, everyone. We're on the stage now. Lots of pantomimes going on. A little bit of interaction. So this is actually the community engagement. So I'm going to be engaging with you. The guys in the front are starting to panic a little bit now. <laughs> and like they said, my name, I'm Paul Condren. Um, I'm going to have a little bit of a, a chat to you about this new uh, way of looking at uh, different diseases of the brain that we've actually been working on. Uh, my role here is um, charge tech. It's probably one of the coolest uh, roles within MATI. It means that I get to do some clinical work so someone injures themselves. You come in, you get scanned, Dr. Dan reports it, goes back to the orthopedic surgeon, we get you sorted, and away you go. I also get to play with a lot of the cool kids, the research team in developing these new ways. Um, and the other part of my job that I really love is the community engagement, that we go, we meet the community, um, and we have some, some kai, some fun, and we work on the problems that we see in Talafati. So we're going to walk through it together. We're going to hold hands. I'm going to introduce you to some new terms. We're going to take it nice and slow. Um, outside of Matai, there's probably a handful of people in the world that actually understands what we're doing here. So everyone in this room is going to know more than um, neuroradiologists sat on the other side of the world. So what we're doing then is targeted MR. We call it targeted MR because we're targeting specific tissues. And we'll ignore all the other tissues. What we're concentrating on today is white matter. So the white matter, funnily enough, are the black parts of this scan. <laughs> so we're going to target the white matter. Now, tissue property, T1. It's a time constant. The time constant of white matter is pretty constant, like the name says. We see changes with disease processes. And these changes are so, so subtle that we haven't really been able to see them before, apart from very time-consuming, heavy data research sequences. So what we've been trying to do is develop something that any hospital or any scanner can actually use. So we've got white matter. Now, normal white matter, like these images show, it's black. OK, just to be confusing. So Davidson Taylor, white matter, what color is it? Black. It's black, yes, yes, here we go. I've got the good crowd today. So let's, um, let's walk through what we're going to be doing. Now, I've put this one up. Let's not get confused by things, OK? So anyone remember the TV program of uh, what's going on through the square window? Well, our window is this green line here. We call it a domain. So we're going to call it a middle domain from now on, OK? But this is our window. So we use two inversion recovery sequences. Now, inversion recovery basically means that we're inverting the color to show pathology. That's all it means. Now, if we look at these two lines, red line, blue line, we'll ignore that blue line because it's actually going in the wrong direction. So it's negative contrast. It's got no good for us in its native form. This red line here, we see it bounce. We see it go up. It's got a little bit of a line there. You can see the red line over on the far side. This is how much contrast we've got. Now, contrast, you've seen some of the Matai shirts going on. We've got black shirts, we've got white shirts. Really big contrast. We can tell the difference between it nice and easy. Now, if we had black shirts and a slight gray shirt, we might not see the difference. So contrast is that difference. Enhance the contrast, see the pathology. Same as you know, you go diving for some crayfish, murky water, you might not see anything. Clean water, I'm getting that bad one there. That's mine. We're eating cray tonight. So, we're looking at this arrow, and we see this black line. When we provide a mathematical framework to this, we see a massive steep line. And if we look over the other side, we've probably got seven, eight, nine, ten times the amount of contrast. It means our water's a lot clearer. We're going to see those crays. We're going to see those kingfishes if we're going to go spearing as well. So, let's get into it. This is a T2 flare. Now, Graham Bitter that uh, started this with us, this is something he invented back in the 80s and 90s. It's apparently, and you'll see it on flyers, this is the way we look at white matter changes. Now, the contrast on it isn't very good. This uh, is a 67-year-old female. She's had three relatively minor head injuries um, over 30 years, and the last one she didn't actually really recover from. So this has been going on a few years. Now, Davidson Taylor, white matter. Healthy white matter, what color were we looking for? Black. Oh, sack this one. 
Here we go. This is our new technique. We can see that there's massive, massive changes. It's white. It should not be white. It should be black. There is something going on in this brain that is outside of normal. Okay? This is something that we haven't been able to see using standard sequences and really difficult to see even using advanced sequences. So we've got it going on. We're seeing some form of pathology. So we have an amazing community. So what we did is we found Davison. It's like, okay, we need a 67-year-old female to come into the scanner. An hour later, there's a 67-year-old female. I like using this as a normal case because there is some bits of pathology going in there. And that is what you expect to see as we start to age. So we look at this one. The white matter is black. Okay, black. Remember that one, Davison? It's black. Now, let's put uh, our case back up. It's white. They are night and day completely different. Uh, Stevie Wonder can see that that is not right compared to this one. Okay? So this is concussion. Concussion, you're probably better off having a big head injury because ACC can see those big changes. It's these small ones that are the problem. Now, if this uh, is left untreated, this can cause long-term permanent damage which can lead to other social problems, family problems. Next one, 17-year-old rugby boy. Five days after he took a, a, a head knock, still not recovered, wasn't feeling good. He's been in our study before. He was a completely different person when he came to see us after this head knock. So again, it's essentially normal. We're not seeing any real change within the white matter. There's some random little bits going on, but you're not going to put your finger on anything to say, well, this is really wrong. Technology again, is this one normal? No, because it's white. It should be black. We've tried everything to make it black. It's just the pathology there that we're seeing. This one I like to use for my control case. He received a stand-down notification. He took a head injury in the same game for the same team scanned at the same time, came to us, he was like, that well, was fine, I got on the bus, came back down to Gisborne, had some tea, went to bed, woke up, no problems at all. Let's put the other one back in again, completely different, night and day. So, black is good, white is bad, okay? We're going even younger now because a lot of these changes, they say, oh, that's age-related change. Well, it's not because we've seen it in 17-year-old. Now we're seeing it in a 14-year-old. Okay, so 14-year-old, took a head injury, nine months previous, has struggled, really, really struggled with concentration. Um, so we thought, well, let's pop them in the scanner, put them in the answer machine. And again, white out, night and day. So we phoned uh, Davison, we need a 14-year-old. Davison says, whatever you do in your own time is your own business, don't get me involved in it. <laughs> No, not like that. So he gets us a 14-year-old in. He actually got us two 14-year-olds in, which was fantastic. Um, so let's have a look at the normal. It's black. Okay, so this is someone that hasn't taken a head injury. It's black. It's beautiful. That's what we want. We'll put the other one back on. It's white. It's completely different. It's not even a... Maybe there's something going on in there. There is something quite severe going on in there. And these are minute changes. This case I love showing because we couldn't get the rugby boy back in to show his recovery. But what we do have is we applied it to our methamphetamine study. 50-year-old with methamphetamine. Now, this is about two weeks, maybe four weeks into his abstinence. And we see complete whiteout, just a tiny, tiny, um, well, tiny, tiny slither of normal here and here. Now, let's have a look when we scanned him eight months later. It's coming back. So we're seeing changes, but we're seeing recovery as well, which is amazing. Now, if we look at, you know, stand-down period for rugby, now, if they're still white out and they go and play and take another head injury, we know that that is going to be the one that causes more damage than the initial one. It's not recovered. Now, medical event with loss of oxygen to the brain. So you've all seen on films Baywatch or something like that. There's someone in the water face down. They run in, big muscles like Davison sat there. They pull them out, a couple of chest compressions, a couple of bits of oxygen, and they go, Bleh. 
and then they get up and the really attractive lady and lifeguard, they go out for food together. Now that doesn't really happen in life. This person has been starved of um, oxygen and blood going to the brain, everything's slowed down, so he's not getting the nutrients in. And we thought, well, let's, let's give it a bash. Again, we're seeing white out here. So I've gone to the, the knowledgeable people, and th this is a hypoxic-related injury. So when we look at um, difficult deliveries, we see the same sort of thing there. Now this is, any machine can do this. It doesn't have to be fancy whiz-bang. This can be, you know, 20-year-old scanner, 30-year-old scanner, 0.5 Tesla, 7 Tesla. It all works. It all gives the same kind of results. It takes a little bit of playing to get our numbers right, but it all works. So, good or bad? Healthy? There we go. They're my people there. Well done. Learn from them, Davison. Learn from them. Okay. Healthy? Not healthy. Not healthy. That's, uh, it, it, it's not good. It's not a good uh, situation to be in. This one and it is a bit stretched, I'm afraid. This is MS. This is kind of where we started with this because we've got these big lesions. And originally, I started using it to find um, more white matter hyperintensities within methamphetamine. So we applied it to the, the MS. And there is, if you squint, stand on one leg, there is this change going on here. So we're talking about the black shirt and the slightly different color black shirt. It's there. Now you need people like, uh, oh, there he is, David Dibblewitz, just there. We need people like him. We need his wife, Miriam, or, or Dr. Dan to actually see this, because it's, it's pretty hard to see. When we apply our technology, bang, we're seeing full borders of this thing. It's there. There's, there's no, is it there? Isn't it there? Now, I have this thing when I do um, presentations, I, uh, and, and I'll just do it straight away. Uh, Dr. Dan Kornfeld, real nerd, uh, he actually programmed this in MATLAB. So our radi he's part radiologist, part physicist, and part programmer, and he's programmed this for us. So he's now moving that direction of you, you have to know what tissue you're looking at, what pathology you're looking at, and then scan to that. So what he's now working on is we scan wide, and then we synthesize all of these different domains to look at different pathologies. So that's the forward direction that we're taking with this one. And I will leave it there, um, otherwise I'll just keep talking. Um, but I would like to thank our friends of Mathi Blue Sky Fund. So these are people that have donated to us with no specific kind of, we're going to donate to this. This is what we use um, the people of Tylafity's um, donations for, is for de developing things like this. We could not do it without the people of Tylafity. They come in, they jump on our scanner, they are, you know, with, without question, the best people in the world. You know, they come and do the business for us. Uh, all families, because we kind of neglect our families a little bit in research. Um, you know, we work long, hard hours, and they kind of accept that. I think my wife prefers it that I'm not home most of the time anyway. So it kind of works for us. Um, and Tuta, we're going to hear, hear about Tuta, but um, he, he did a lot within this community. Uh, his legacy still goes on to do that. Um, he was a, a teacher for us, a student for us, an inspiration for us, um, and more than that, he was, he was our friend, um, and we will continue this, this work. But he has provided a, a definite spark for the future generations of, uh, well, I can do that too, and that's what we want. And there's some young people in the room, and maybe... In 10 years' time, they're going to be up here telling us what's what. Um, but thank you very much, um, and enjoy the rest of the, the few days.